right now? Yeah, so let me give you a perspective on what I see happening. And I've been involved um, with several SPACs um, that have been successful to date. Um, we are seeing a material dislocation in the SPAC market. And I don't expect to see 30 SPACs price in a week in the way that we had seen at the end of February, where I think it reached an all time high. I don't think it's a bubble bursting though. SPACs are absolutely here to stay as an asset class. But I do think there were some fundamentals going on over the last few weeks that drove some of the changes in the market. Um, I can walk you through that. Let me give you a few reasons of what's going on. Um, first, there was a 50 basis point increase in rates in the last two weeks. We had a 0% interest rate environment in the past and SPACs looked incredibly attractive to yield buyers when we were at zero. That is less so now, obviously a, a big change in condition. We also see that business combinations are off over the last week. SPACs have had the benefit of being valued on long-term cash flows. It's frankly one of the reasons why you see so many targets skewed towards higher growth and long-term growth getting executed in the market. Many of these businesses are pre-EBITDA. And in an interest rate environment adjustment that just happened, these kinds of changes are going to impact the DCFs as earnings are skewed very much so towards the back end evaluation. And then finally, outside the SPAC market, there is an expectation of inflation increases. You all have been talking about it on this program, and that's right. been driving a rapid transition from growth to more traditional businesses in the market. So overall, these trends are creating a significant pause with institutional buyers. All makes sense what you say. So, so if it's not a bubble where everything bursts and, and there, there's some good ones in there, how, how do you pick that? How do you pick a good SPAC from a bad SPAC if you're a retail investor when we keep hearing that some of these companies don't have to do all the due diligence that you would necessarily get in an IPO and when you're in an environment with rising rates and growth companies aren't as in demand? You know, there are 338 SPACs outstanding with $110 billion in outstanding capital. It's an extraordinary population of interesting companies. I think if, if I were an investor, I would be very selective. I think banks are seeing that transition today as well, where they are now focused on underwriting A plus teams. And the teams that are B minus C plus are probably not gonna get underwritten while the public takes a pause uh, and has a moment of digestion for some of the SPACs in the market. Having said that, you know, SPACs are still really active in the market. There are great companies, there's active deal flow that's happening. And so there's an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of activity because what we saw last year was $95 billion of issuance. And most happened in the second half of the year, so they still have two years remaining. 85% of that capital has at least 20 months remaining. So there's plenty of time for investors to see good deals, uh, to make dis distinctions between what kind of SPAC sponsor they want to back and, and who they don't. Jackie, I wanted to ask a, a broad question about, about fintech. Clearly, it's been a great couple of years for the likes of Square and, and PayPal, uh, and their share prices uh, prove that. I, I wonder whether you thought there's just more gains to come and this is going to be their decade, or whether, in fact, they are now about to face a, a big fight back from traditional banks, uh, being more ready and, and, and nimble on the tech front or, or other players like Walmart uh, with the news of the last week. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's great news. I think Walmart has an amazing opportunity ahead of it uh, because of the scale and physical locations they have across the country. Having said that, I do think technology is providing solutions that are meeting the needs of consumers and businesses. But today there's only one and a half trillion dollars of capital invested in what I call fintech companies. And there's $16 trillion of capital invested in financial companies. Interestingly, over 50% of the market cap of banks are over 50 years old. And so I do see a wholesale transition over the next 10 years from that very small chunk of fintech market cap to really taking over and revolutionizing banking. And I think it's, it's simple, which is customers prefer simple, easy solutions that abstract away complexity. And today, I don't think banks are meeting that need. You could see it with NPS scores of banks versus fintechs. And I think banks will 
see a lot more competition and have to respond in a way that meets the needs of consumers, whether that's speed or um, availability or even just simplicity of language. I think that's where the pressure is really being placed by fintech on the banking industry. Jackie, great discussion. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Up next, a retail